On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to wire a single location GFCI receptacle circuit. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. We are gonna be working with electrical components on today's video. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always make sure that you're always current and up-to-date with your current electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Also, turn off the power from your circuit breaker whenever you're working with electricity. And if you're unsure and unconfident with working with electrical, please hire a certified and qualified electrician. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's video. So my goal for this channel is to show you every type of wiring possible, including this one right here, where it's a single location GFCI on a receptacle circuit meaning that this is the only one that's protected the receptacle that's downstream of it is not protected which means that if this is plugged in like so and in case this trips okay there's no more power in there this receptacle right here is still powered on this scenario right here is probably if you're in the bathroom and you just want uh, GFCI protection on where the sink area is and the rest that's going through where it's far away from any wet area is still connected with a receptacle like just like what you see here so if this trips right there in case that trips this receptacle is still going to be on again before starting any type of work make sure you turn off the power from your circuit breaker and make sure that you always test the lines with your voltage detector make sure that this is tested on a live wire first to make sure that your voltage detector is properly working and not defective all right that being said let's get wiring so here are all the tools and materials i'll be using in today's video including this 15 amp gfci now you can use a 20 amp gfci as well depending on what you need but i'll be using and wiring it on a 12 gauge wire on today because it is coming from a 20 amp circuit breaker and that's the power source now if you look in the back of this gfci there is no yellow tab like what you see on the older ones i don't know if it's just the eaton brand but this one doesn't have a yellow sticker on the load so that's that and i'll be using an outlet so this is also a 15 amp outlet as well this is uh, tamper resistant i like to use this two in one insulated screwdriver and this is a very helpful tool right here if you don't have one yet i highly suggest that you get one for yourself because it's a game changer whenever you're tucking in wire i'll show you in a bit a volt claw and a voltage detector wire strippers and the rest you already know but most importantly the wire connectors that i'll be using today is the 221 way goes so i love using this instead of the wire nuts because all you have to do is open up the lever Put in your wire, close it, and you're good to go, and it's reusable. So all these tools, including the Wagos, I'll leave it on the description down below. Check out those links if you're interested in getting these products. So what I already have installed here are single gang J boxes. You can either use a new work, which is the one nailed to the stud, if you have an open wall and no drywall yet. But if you have drywall already installed, I highly suggest that you use an old work that is adjustable, which is the screw in type like this one. You can use um, one of these which is pretty much an old work as well where you can locate it anywhere on the drywall with these little flappers right there but I only suggest that you use this if you're installing switches because these are flimsy and if you are going to be using outlets they are going to get used over time with the plugs in and out constantly getting movement so this is a lot sturdier onto the stud rather than this if we're going to install pigtails onto this GFCI before we install it into our electrical or J box and you can tell that there is a strip gauge right here for the back wire so if we take our hot wire and you strip it make sure that it's on that length we're going to be installing the hot on the brass and the neutral white onto the silver so all you have to do for back wiring is pick one of these terminals it doesn't matter insert two like that what i like about back wiring is that you can tighten it as much as you want okay make that nice and tight we're going to install the ground pigtail now with this i'm using the volt claw to make that j hook make sure you insert this on a clockwise manner and then tighten that down So now this is ready to be installed onto our first J box. It's the power source. It can come from a 20 amp circuit breaker or a 20 amp other source of power. 
Okay, we're gonna go through here and we're gonna go through our first J box. I like what I do in all my other wiring videos, I like to label everything. This is the power source and this is a 12-2 with ground. We're gonna be installing a three lever 221 Wago. Okay, so we're gonna open up two levers right there. I'm gonna go neutral to neutral and hot to hot. Now another key thing that I want you to show you is make sure that when you're wiring this there is no exposed copper onto the Wagos and make sure that on the top ceiling of the Wagos you can see that it is touching up there of the wire. So now we're going to connect our ground wire. We're also going to install a three-way Wago wire. So we're going to open up two ports. So you can see that these are the three levers. That means we're going to have to insert another wire onto these later on. But before we go into that, you know me, I like to go over recaps. If you don't like recaps, you can just forward onto this, but I like to make everything nice and clear with you friends. We have our 12-2 with ground wire. This is coming from our power source, which is a 20 amp circuit breaker. We are using a 12 gauge, and this is going to our first J box. We have our pigtail GFCI, which is pigtailed onto the line side, not the load on the line side. We have our hot on the brass, neutral on the silver and our ground, and we connected that uh, neutral on the neutral of the power source and the hot of the power source and connected the ground as well. With that being said, let's introduce our second wire that's going to be going to this J-Box connecting to the second J-Box, which is another 12-2 gauge wire. So we're now going to label this one 12-2 wire with ground. Connect the neutral to the neutral, connect the hot to the hot finish off the last for the ground. We're gonna go follow this 12-2 and now we're gonna strip this one. We're gonna take our outlet or receptacle and we're gonna just put the neutral on the silver and the hot on the brass. We're gonna do it on a clockwise position. And that's it. Now this configuration right here is if you install a GFCI that is with an outlet that is not protected. Okay, so this is a different type of wiring. As you already know, on this, on this channel, I like to do multiple and different types of wiring for you friends. Usually you, you have an outlet that is protected by the GFCI, but in this case, this is an outlet that is not protected by a GFCI, but it is still powered on and you have a GFCI like this. An example of this is probably if you're in the bathroom, you have one on the sink, and this one is located elsewhere that is not protected, that is not close to any six feet of a wet area, okay, like a sink. But this is actually the good time for you to use your volt claw to push these wires in without having to use your fingers or damage them. This is a great time, you know, this fits between the tiniest crevices where when you're trying to orientate this receptacle like so and in case this trips okay there's no more power in there this receptacle right here is still powered on once again friends thanks so much for tuning in if you found this video helpful please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe and notification bell because i'll be having more videos like this coming up so i'll see you in the next one